Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the planning commissioners will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Commissioners and staff are participating from remote locations and or practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda for today's meetings. Members of the public wishing to speak during item four, the public comment portion, or during our public hearing today, will be able to do so by raising their hand and will be given the ability to address the commission. Can we please ask for roll call? Yes, let the record reflect that all commissioners are present with the exception of Commissioner Carter. Thank you. Uh, item two is approval of minutes. There aren't, there aren't any minutes today, so we'll move on to item three, public comments. I will now open the public comment for any um, item. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was Did just- Did I miss quick. something? No, no, not, not at all. I apologize. I was just going to give the instructions for participation. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, if you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. If you are dialing in via telephone, please press star nine and star six to unmute yourself once uh, called upon. And we do have public comment, caller 3662. You have been given permission to speak. If you would please introduce yourself for the record. Yeah, uh, can you hear me okay? We can. If you would provide your name for the record, please. Yes, uh, William Pinkerton. I'm a property owner in Streamside. Um, if this if this uh, comment has to do with the um, agenda item under the public hearing, um, please wait until that item. Or is this uh, oh, is this something more than one item right now? This is on um, items that are not on the agenda tonight. Okay, so this has nothing to do with Jane Dispensary. Not yet. That's further on in the agenda tonight. So we have to stay on for the whole thing and until you get to it, is that correct? Yes, yes, and there's only one item on the agenda tonight, so it shouldn't be much longer. Okay, my apologies. That's okay. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised, so if that's the case, I will go ahead and uh, close the public comment period and we'll move on to planning commissioner's reports. Um, the statement of purpose uh, for the planning commission is that we are charged with carrying out the California planning and zoning laws in the city of Santa Rosa. Duties include implementing of plans, ordinances, and policies related to land use matters, assisting in writing and implementing the general plan and area plans, holding public hearings and acting on proposed changes to the zoning code, zoning map, general plan, tentative, subdivision maps and undertaking any special planning studies as needed. So with that, um, are there any committee reports? Okay, uh, I don't see any. Uh, so we'll move on to 4.3 commissioner reports. Are there any reports from my fellow commissioners tonight? Okay, not seeing any. Then we'll move right on to department reports. Ms. Jones? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair Weeks, with the commission. Uh, I will be brief. Uh, I'm getting a little feedback, so I apologize. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I just wanted to just quickly let the commission know that um, so I am here in uh, in place of Claire Hartman tonight. Um, she's your normal staff liaison, um, but she and several of our other planners are headed to San Francisco right now to accept an award from the Northern California chapter of the American Planning Association for the downtown stationary specific plan that was recently adopted by council. So we're very excited about that. So I just wanted to share that with the commission. Um, and then also um, just, uh, you're going to be meeting her momentarily, but I did want to um, let you know that tonight is the debut of one of our um, recent hires, um, one of our new city planners. Um, as I mentioned to the commission, 
uh, several months ago, we were in the process of hiring uh, several new city planners. And so Suzanne Hartman is one of them. We are extremely excited to have her on board with the city. She, uh, she's only been with us a short while, but has also already um, shown herself to be uh, a rock star uh, among planners. So we're excited um, to have her here and I'm excited to have her uh, meet you tonight. So that's all I have. Great, thank you. Um, so with that, we'll move on to uh, item six, statement of abstentions. Are there any abstentions tonight? Okay, seeing none. And we have no consent items, so we'll move on to our scheduled item tonight. Uh, it is item 8.1, public hearing, Jane Dispensary, conditional use permit, 4040 Highway 12, conditional use permit 21-071. This is an ex parte item, so we'll go ahead and start with um, me. <clears throat> Commissioner Cisco. I visited the site and I have no new information to disclose. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Duggan. I visited the site and have no additional information. Commissioner Holton. I visited the site and have nothing further to disclose. Thank you. And Commissioner Krepke. I visited the site and have no other information to disclose. Thanks. Vice Chair Peterson. I have no information to disclose. Thanks. And I also visited the site and have no additional information to disclose. So with that, uh, welcome Ms. Hartman um, for your debut um, in Thank front you. of us. So <laughs> take it away. Thank you and good evening at Chair Weeks and uh, members of the Planning Commission. Um, it is great to be here and I'm sure it's uh, first of many um, projects. Um, I am presenting the uh, project item for Jane Dispensary. Let me go ahead and share my screen. There we go. Can you see my screen? Great. Let me just present. All right. So I'm presenting today's item, Jane Dispensary, which is a conditional use permits um, file number 21-0171. Um, and the proposed project site is located at 4040 Highway 12, alternatively uh, known as Sonoma Highway. The proposed use um, is to operate a cannabis retail facility with delivery service um, within an existing commercial building. And the applicant proposes to operate the retail dispensary between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m., seven days a week. The project site is located, oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, the project history, uh, the applicant submitted a major conditional use permit review application on August 18th of last year. Um, and then shortly thereafter, there was a neighborhood meeting um, that was held to discuss the proposed project and several neighbors participated in the meeting and voiced their concerns um, about the retail facility um, and specifically its location um, uh, because it surrounds uh, a lot of residential uh, districts. And I would like to um, just note here that even though there is no required setback from residential zones, there is a 600 foot minimum setback from any school um, as well as any other permitted cannabis retail facilities. And this proposed site is in compliance with the location requirements. So the project location is in the northeastern quadrant of the city. And it is on a corner lot um, with frontage on Highway 12 and Streamside Drive. The proposed space um, used to be occupied by a former pet shop and there are two other operating businesses within this commercial building. The Proposed site is located within the neighborhood commercial zoning district, which is consistent with the designated general plan use, um, retail and business services. 
The surrounding zoning districts include office commercial and a mobile home park to the north, um, and then medium residential to the east, south, and west. This is the proposed site plan, and I just want to note here that as of right now, the lot has a total of 36 parking spaces, and that includes two ADA parking spaces. This is the uh, current floor plan. Oops, sorry. And this is the proposed floor plan. The, as you are aware, the city code requires cannabis retail facilities to comply with specific operational requirements um, pertaining to on-site security, odor control, lighting, and noise. And the applicant has provided um, detailed plans and um, reports for all of those operational requirements. Um, and after reviewing those um, proposed plans and the entirety of the application, staff was able to make the following findings uh, for the proposed project listed here. This is a current uh, photo of the site. This is the proposed storefront, um, and there are some proposed exterior modifications, including new signage and windows, um, but they are considered uh, minor, and they are subject only to director level review and approval. Based on the size of the, I know that says lot, so please mind my typo there, that is uh, meant to say floor area instead of a lot. Um, due to the size of floor area, the required parking spaces would be uh, eight vehicle parking spaces and one bicycle space, which it is in compliance with because the total lot, the entire lot features 36 vehicle parking spaces. The proposed project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for the following three um, categorical exemptions. There's class one, which is existing facilities, class three, which is the conversion of an existing structure from one use to another, and class 32 in the development projects. And in conclusion, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the Planning Commission by resolution, approve a conditional use permit to allow for the proposed cannabis retail dispensary facility with delivery use located at 4040 Highway 12. And this is my contact information. If you have any questions or comments, I will also allow um, or have you meet the applicant who is on now, who will also be giving a small oral presentation. Thank you, Ms. Hartman. Um, are there any questions of Ms. Hartman before we hear from the applicant? Okay, seeing none, uh, then go ahead, Ms. Hartman. I would like to introduce our applicant. His name is Mario Tamo. Uh, hello, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. I, uh, I apologize. I had a little bit of uh, technical diff difficulties getting uh, uh, getting on the call here, but I'm but I'm here now, and uh, I believe that we also have uh, my um, two uh, partners on the on the line, Jamie Shira and uh, Leanne Baker. Is that true? Maybe not. Yes, I see Jamie, Shira, and uh, and Leanne too. Yes, I do. Hi, Jamie Shira here. Um, now, can you hear me? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, I think there was a delay. Hi, Jamie Shira. So um, my, uh, my name is Mario Tamo. I am the uh, the name on the applicant, and uh, we um, you know our company is uh, is um, laser focused on uh, retail dispensaries. We have uh, one already open here in uh, in in Santa Rosa, and more coming. And uh, 
we're excited about this uh, this particular low uh, location. I'm happy to uh, to answer any questions. I, I actually, you know, we when we when we had our first uh, uh, public input uh, hearing, this is probably this is this is probably six six months ago or so. Um, we did put together a slideshow and a document that um, you know that outlines sort of the co you know the company mission. Um, in in this case, um, I'm happy to you know we're happy to talk uh, you know to talk about that. But we actually didn't didn't want to overwhelm you with a big slideshow or anything like that. We just wanted to sort of meet everybody and and uh, tell you all what we're up to and, and field any questions if if you have them. Um, Jamie Shira is an owner in the company and is has the most experience of uh, in in the industry out of out of all of us she was a founding member of a one of the very first um legal uh the obviously dispensaries that uh that began creating a brand name for themselves and this was happening in uh, in san francisco in and around 10 years ago um hopefully i I'd, I'd actually like her to speak a little bit to her her knowledge of the industry and and sort of what's what's brought her here and then um, I'd like Leanne to, to talk a little bit about just Leanne is the is the is the COO of the company, um, and you know operations is a is a gigantic part of of what makes these things go because they're very very regulated and and um, everything needs to be perfectly by the book. So if she could just touch on the operations side, that'd be great, and and um, and we're happy to feel it feel any questions you 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 have. Jamie, do you, mind, you. do you mind talking a bit about about the industry, Jamie? Hi. No, I don't at all. Thank you, Mario. Um, Jamie Shira here. I have been in cannabis since 2010, as Mario said. Uh, started my career in San Francisco, always lived in Santa Rosa and commuted to San Francisco. So uh, spent a lot of time on the road. Uh, I lost my house in the Tubbs fire, so I had to relocate and um, pause my cannabis work. Then I've um, now relocated in Healdsburg, um, but excited to work in cannabis in Sonoma County. But so to speak to what I've seen in the cannabis industry and what's been successful um, is creating a safe environment where people feel comfortable talking about um, exploring this product as a medicine or for their um you know, mental or physical well-being, however they are, are seeking it, but specifically feeling like they're not doing something wrong, they're comfortable, they're safe. And um, what's worked in my previous career is really bringing a level of education and sophistication to this offering. So speaking about it in a, in a way in which we're respecting the medicine or we're respecting its use and the different the different forms that people are really exploring it for so really being adaptive or just being understanding to how people are trying to apply it to their life and what they're seeking out of it and understanding our consumers needs and specifically for Jane it's this forthcoming consumer someone who's who hasn't explored cannabis previously, but maybe their doctor is saying it's a good alternative or, Hey, you take a prescription that helps you, you know, helps this part of your life. And maybe you need something to help with sleep or, you know, you, the, the non-traditional methods like the tinctures or other forms that people aren't as familiar with. So having products that suit those needs and in an environment that feels good and comfortable comfortable for them to do so. That's really been our kind of successful formula that we've been able to bring to market and get the appropriate audience for. And uh, Jamie, J Jamie really was one of the, one of the very first out, out the gate to create a brand in the industry and formalize it and, and, and know what's important to members of the community. Um, what's what is um, what she and and we have with her help have have curated is a a very very large array of products that 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 we feel really really service the service the community you know in 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 a way we you know we have we have a lot of really really good feedback on our selections and you know what we carry we listen to the we listen to the community and try to try to make the sh uh, shelves reflective of that so. Um, Leanne, you can uh, you can touch a little bit a little bit on on uh, operations if you if you wouldn't mind. Uh, 
Aha. Okay. okay. So, um, yeah, I, as you all know, the cannabis industry is highly regulated and it is a challenge to navigate those waters every day. Um, I think we're doing a good job at multiple, you know, at both of our stores that are, that are um, operating now. We do have um, something that's very special. Uh, and as Jamie touched on, you know, bringing education and making people feel welcome and included and as well as um, getting the right dosage, getting the right medicine, getting the right feeling, um, you know, when they're, when, if they do have anxiety, then this is a, a good way for uh, many people to, to navigate those waters. Um, operating in a medical market, we do see a lot of that. Um, and it, you know, people that truly do have these, these issues that we, we like to make sure that they understand exactly what they're getting and they're getting the right product. It's very important to us. Um, yeah. We do we, we do have a medical license as well and uh, we, we own we actually own a, a dispensary in St. Louis, Missouri that's un, un, under a medical framework. Um, so we have a lot of experience in operating in, in, in that framework and also the the medical and and recreational use, which obviously California California is. Um, um, I don't I know you guys your guys' time is valuable. you you hear a lot of these, you hear a million things all the time about what's going on in the community. So you know I don't we don't we want to, we want to answer any que you know pointed questions that you have, and and uh, you know we're we're ha happy to do so. Thank you. Um, are there any questions of the applicant from the, my fellow commissioners? Okay, then seeing none, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing on this item. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raised hand button. If you are dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. You see the countdown timer on your screen. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so, and your microphone will be muted at the end of the countdown. Chair Weeks, I see no hands raised at this time. Oh, I apologize. We do have a caller, um, caller 3500. You have been given permission to speak. If you would please introduce yourself for the record and then provide your comment. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. we can. Thanks. All right. Uh, I appreciate the time today. My name is Bill Vreeland. I'm a resident on Kintyre Road, right behind the proposed project. Um, I don't think anybody doubts the you know, the business as far as what they do and, and the fact that it probably fits in the area in which it's zoned. I think all the property owners, well, I can't speak for everybody, but um, we understand that there's a commercial component in the neighborhood in which we live. I think the underlying factor here, there's several reasons that we're concerned. Uh, and, and, you know, just to start I think one of the biggest things that, uh, you know, after the months have gone by, we look at it, the reasons that they don't allow dispensaries to go near schools. I know there's a 600 foot setback requirement, which this location meets. So I think while the project adheres to the letter of the law, it might not adhere to the spirit. And what I mean by that is, is we're butting up right against a residential neighborhood where there's families, children, and et cetera. So I would question uh, the location more than anything else. Um, I know that there are several dispensaries in Santa Rosa. I would ask the commissioners, how many do we need? Um, you know, that might not be the right question for this conversation, but, you know, I know that there are four within two miles of this location and six within three miles and a total of 13 in Santa Rosa. I admire Mario, Jamie, and Leanne for you know, taking over the world one dispensary at a time. I'm in business myself. I don't uh, dispute that fact. The reality is, is I just would prefer it not to be in my backyard. Uh, other concerns as well would be potential devaluation and property value from perceived, uh, 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 whether real or not, but, uh, uh, you know, causing our, our properties to devalue parking and congestion hours of operation, nine o'clock at night on a Sunday, 
in a residential neighborhood. So there's several things there that uh, uh, make my family concerned about putting in a dispensary in our neighborhood. Um, I appreciate the time. I hope the commissioners would decide or consider here if they are favoring fostering business concerns over the concerns of their residents, um, which I hope you will hear from others in our neighborhood that share a similar opinion. Thank you. Thank you. I see another hand raised. Yes. Caller 3662, you have been given permission to speak if you would share your name for the record before providing your comment. Yeah, I share many of the same concerns just voiced. Um, um, pardon me, sir. How I'm... many is too many? Can you um, please state your name for the record? Yeah, William Pinkerton. I'm a property owner in Streamside. And I am a capitalist, and so I don't have any qualms with what the applicant is trying to do. Like the previous caller, I just think that the location is not proper. In addition to what he cited, you also have a big homeless population. Many of them congregate around the creek area, and it's gonna be a magnet for these homeless to stay over in this area more, perhaps come into the residential areas and uh, do their thing. In addition, being on Highway 12, that's a, a very good exit to get out of town. And so, in my viewpoint, you're inviting crime. So. Those are the reasons, and I think it's unconscionable that the applicant, as well as did we lose him? Uh, caller, I'm here. I'm oh. here. A anyway, I was saying I, I find it unconscionable that the applicant, as well as this committee, would allow this type of business to be open at nine o'clock at night. It just, I, I can't even put it together as to the common sense of that. So I'm not against them having a location in a more commercial area and to have as many dispensaries in Sonoma County. I don't think they need any more in Sonoma or in Santa Rosa per se, but as far as this location, I'm dead set against it. And I'm very, very upset that they would even consider the operating hours of nine to nine. I think that's an outrage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Caller, the next caller is Leanne Baker. This is actually, um, I just wanted to touch on what the last two callers have said that. Excuse me, Ms. Baker, um, can, uh, Ms. Crocker, can you weigh in on an applicant responding to comments in the public comment period? I just want to make sure we're following all the rules. Yes, thank you. We need to allow the public comment period to continue. If and when there are no additional comments, you can then close the public comment period. And at that time, you can ask staff uh, to respond to any of the comments. And staff can also ask for input from the applicant and then we can continue from there. Okay, thank you, I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much. So are there any other public comments? We have no additional hands raised at this time. Great, thank you. Uh, so with that, I will go ahead and close the public hearing on this portion and bring it back to the commission. Um, we heard from comments from two neighbors um, one was concerned about the location and another was concerned also about location and inviting crime and the hours. So, um, Ms. Hartman, can you talk about the hours? Yes, I can. Um, the hours of the proposed site will be from 
9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So it will be closed um, by 9 p.m. Just to um, sum up what the concern was for one of those uh, comments. And are those hours consistent with the um, comprehensive cannabis ordinance? Yes. Yes, the, the code says um, from the hours of 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions from my fellow commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Cisco. Um, Ms. Hartman, could you also just sort of address the, the concern that the public has of how many or too many, like how is Santa Rosa um, mapping these out? just so that, that that question gets answered? Um, yes, we do have an updated map that shows um, the locations of permitted dispensaries. Um, I'm not sure if Jess or Director Jess um, or anyone on the, else on the line has um, any further clarification about how the city is going about mapping the dispensaries. Sure, yeah, I can, I can jump in here. Thanks, um, uh, Suzanne. So yes, as mentioned, we do map these and with every application, um, as was mentioned in um, the presentation, also included in your packet, uh, part of staff's uh, review of a project is to determine whether a project is uh, within uh, or, or what distance they are within another uh, similar use to make sure that we don't um, have a problem with the concentration requirements that are outlined in the code. So for this project, um, it is not located um, within the, uh, I think it's 600 feet from another location. Um, but beyond that, the city does not limit the number of cannabis um, uh, retail locations within the city. Thank you. Uh, other questions of staff, uh, Vice Chair Peterson. Uh if, if you've got it handy, are, what are the operating hours for uh, liquor stores under a CUP or similar? I do not have that um, on me at the moment. Um, Here comes Ms. Jones. Sorry. Yes, Director Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm gonna see if I can pull this up real quickly, but um, I don't believe that the city limits the hours of operation for alcohol permits. We do have, generally speaking, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the term that's used, but we have longer hours or extended hours um, that is permitted um, in our commercial zoning districts and I believe in our, our industrial zoning districts also for any, uh, any retail type use where if they go beyond a certain time, and again, I'm gonna try and pull this up quickly. Uh, if they go beyond a certain time, they need to uh, obtain a minor use permit. Um, and let me see if I can find this real quick. Uh, let's see, for extended hours. Um, oh gosh, thought I could come up with it quickly. Um, so if you, if you give me a moment, I can look that up. But generally speaking, um, hours are not limited, but if they go beyond a certain time in the evening or start um, at a certain time in the morning, um, it requires a minor use permit. Thank you. Uh, any other questions at this time? Uh, Commissioner Krapke. Sorry to harp on the time thing, um, but uh, Planner Hartman or, or Deputy uh, Director Jones, can you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the hours of operation are, are um, held within the CUP. So if they say we wanna be open from five or from noon to 5 p.m., and that's in the application. And then later on, they want to alter that to 7 p.m. They'd have to start a whole process in order to do that. Is that correct? Yes, that, that would be correct. If they're going to modify, if they, if they want to modify any conditions of approval, um, using that one as an example, um, yes, they would need to go back uh, to the review authority uh, to request a change in those conditions. Okay, so basically, if going from nine to nine, which is allowed by the ordinance, allows them to have any operating hours they wish within the ordinance's restrictions, correct? Correct. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? Okay, so with that, um, if somebody with this item has one resolution, if somebody would like to move the resolution for discussion, Commissioner Cisco. 
Uh, do you want to see if Ms. Baker wanted to have a response to? Okay, thank you. Uh, no, we're all good, thank you. Okay. Thank you for circling back, Commissioner Cisco. Uh, so is there someone who would like to uh, read the resolution for so we can discuss the project? Vice Chair Peterson. Uh, I'll do it. The, uh, I move the resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Santa Rosa, making findings and determinations in approving a conditional use permit for Jane Dispensary to allow 1,997 square feet of cannabis retail dispensary with delivery located at 4040 Highway 12, file number CUP21-071, uh, neighborhood meeting was conducted on November 22nd, 2021, uh, and waive further reading. Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, Commissioner Krepke. So that was moved by Vice Chair Peterson, seconded by Commissioner Krepke. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and start discussion. So we'll start with uh, Commissioner Cisco tonight. Um, this is yet another very tight application, um, well put together in terms of uh, uh, helping us see that this project meets all of the findings uh, included in the conditional use permit. And I just wanted to say just a, a little bit more about the concern about being close to residential and um, the fact that that's part of the city's goals is to make sure that these are, you know, sprinkled throughout the city, uh, increase the walkability. And so having them, you know, close to residential with all of these conditions in place for noise, odor, all of that um, so that it's it's walkable and um, easy to access in, in a variety of different neighborhoods throughout the city. So uh, with that being said, um, I can make all of the findings for this particular project and we'll be voting for it. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Duggan. Um, I too can make all the required findings for the project and I think it's, um, you know, this location is on a major commercial thoroughfare. It's got access from Highway 12. Um, the the uh, clients don't have to go through the residential neighborhood to access the property. So I think it's actually a good site. And I think the neighbors will find out with the enhanced security that's required uh, by our ordinance that they're not gonna have a problem with um, homeless individuals or people um, hanging around the parking lot because that's not allowed. So I'm in, um, in favor of the project. Thank you. And Commissioner Holton? I can also make all the required findings uh, and also be in support of this conditional use permit. You know, and, and of course, Commissioner Duggan takes my point again. No, it's, it's the same thing that we hear time and time again, the concern from residents about regarding safety and actually studies have been done to show that it actually makes the neighborhood safer. So you're gonna find that it's not really necessarily a bad thing. And in regard to hours of operations, I know at several liquor stores in Santa Rosa where they're open until 11, 12 o'clock at night that are located directly across the street from a residential house. So, you know, and that didn't really, you know, have any real major impact. So I hope to, I hope some of this mitigated some of your concerns, um, but, uh, Thank you very much. I'll also be in support of this project. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Krepke. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to add um, to what my fellow commissioners have already said. Uh, I agree with just about all of it. So I'll just say that I can make all the required findings and will be in support of the application. Thank you. Vice Chair Peterson. Um, my fellow commissioners made you know several of the points I, I was planning on making, um, but while we've got the public here, I mean, I think we get used to it. It's been a few years of us seeing these conditional use permits, but um, you know, every time it goes into a neighborhood, that's that's your neighborhood, and um, I think it's important uh, to to kind of peek behind the curtain and and maybe discuss what sort of we see. So, so speaking for myself, um, you know, I don't see at this point a big distinction. Uh, between alcohol and cannabis. And if we're going to allow one to operate legally, 
Um, I think it just makes sense. And what the city decided after several years of discussion and public input was, was that they, they agreed with legalizing it and allowing it to operate as, as retail sales within the city. Um, and, you know, I don't remember the specific discussion, but they did not set a cap on the number of dispensaries. Um, and I think the idea was, you know, one, to disperse them throughout the city so that, you know, there's not a red light district kind of of cannabis, any, you know, any one neighborhood in Santa Rosa is bearing a disproportionate burden, but also to kind of let, you know, the market decide on, you know, how much cannabis sales can this area support. So um, I think that's kind of the reasoning there that, that Commissioner Cisco touched on. Um, in terms of, again, we, we've heard it before, the, the security concerns, the homelessness issues, you know, I walk this trail frequently. I'm, I'm very familiar with, with what's going on there. And having more eyes, having a security plan, having monitors, cameras does, in fact, you know, despite maybe the historic reputation of cannabis, make the area uh, safer, more eyes, you know, more people paying attention makes it safer for everybody. Um, and again, I agree with uh, Commissioner Holton. To my knowledge, there's been no uh, incidents. We haven't seen, uh, at least we haven't heard anything from Santa Rosa PD or anybody that there's been issues with this. So, so I, I'm optimistic that there'll be a, a good neighbor. And for the other concerns, I mean, this is a conditional use permit. So they have to meet the conditions of the permit to keep operating. And that includes things like odor. You can't detect, you know, the odor of, of cannabis outside the building. You know, they've got to have the security plan and it's not forever. Um, you know, it, it, it's only for two years. And um, I think with a second location, um, I think the applicant has a, a lot of incentive to, to be a good neighbor. So um, for those reasons, um, I can make the findings in the uh, resolution and we'll be voting in favor of this. Thank you. Um, I also am in favor of the project and can make all the uh, required findings. Uh, it's a very comprehensive application. Um, as been said before, we've been seeing these now for a few years. Uh, we hear the same concerns from every neighborhood. Um, one of our roles as planning commission is to implement um, the policies of the city council and their policy is uh, having cannabis dispensaries in neighborhoods as Commissioner Cisco said. Um, so with that, um, we'll go ahead and um, call for vote, please. Thank you, Commissioner Cisco. Aye. Commissioner Duggan? Aye. Commissioner Holton? Aye. Commissioner Okrupke? Aye. Vice Chair Peterson? Aye. Chair Weeks? Aye. So that passes with six ayes. Um, please note that this uh, action is final unless an appeal is filed within 10 calendar days of today's action. The time limit will extend to the following business day if the last day falls on a day that the city is closed. For information on how to submit an appeal form, please contact the project planner. So with that, uh, unless staff has anything else they'd like to convey tonight, don't see any, we will go ahead and adjourn the meeting until our next scheduled planning commission meeting. Thank you all. Thank you.